Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky recently reported record third quarter results despite economic headwinds. Revenue was up 29% versus last year. The home share giant continues to benefit from more flexible work rules, longer stays, and growth in non-urban travel. The reopening of cities and growth in cross-border travel are also fueling demand. Airbnb's cross-border room nights were up 60% versus last year, while urban bookings grew 30%. Greater demand for home sharing is driving greater supply as more properties list on the platform. And Chesky says that the current macroeconomic uncertainty also has people interested in earning extra income through hosting. Take a listen as Airbnb discusses their latest results and the outlook for the remainder of the year. You know, Q3 was another record quarter despite macroeconomic headwinds. We had nearly 100 million nights and experiences booked, which is up 25% year over year. Gross booking value was 15.6 billion. This is up 31% year over year. Revenue grew 29% year over year to 2.9 billion, our highest ever. And when you exclude foreign exchange, our revenue increased 36% year over year. Now, we also had our most profitable quarter ever. Net income was $1.2 billion. And this is up $400 million from a year ago. Now, this represents a 42% net income margin. Adjusted EBITDA was $1.5 billion, also our highest ever. And we generated $960 million of free cash flow. In fact, over the last 12 months, we generated $3.3 billion in free cash flow. What our Q3 results demonstrate is that Airbnb continues to drive growth and profitability at scale. And even with the macroeconomic uncertainties, we believe that we're well positioned for the road ahead. Now, why is this? Well, new use cases such as long-term stays and non-urban travel are here to stay. And this is because millions of people now have the flexibility that they didn't have before the pandemic. At the same time, we've seen recovery in urban and cross-border travel, two of our strongest segments before the pandemic. And just like during the Great Recession in 2008 when Airbnb started, people today are especially interested in earning extra income through hosting. Now, during the quarter, we saw a number of positive business trends. First, guest demand on Airbnb remains strong. Globally, we exceeded 90 million guest arrivals during the quarter. This is another record. Now, even with macroeconomic headwinds, nights and experiences booked increased 25%. And during the quarter, we also continued to see longer lead times, supporting a stronger backlog for Q4. Second, guests are increasingly returning to cities and crossing borders. Both segments continue to accelerate. Cross-border gross nights booked increased 58% compared to a year ago. High-density urban nights booked grew 27%. And now even as these two segments return, demand for domestic and non-urban travel remains strong. Third, guests continue to stay longer on Airbnb. Over the last year, we've seen many companies require their employees to return to the office. And at the same time, long-term stays remain 20% of our total gross nights booked on Airbnb. And finally, four, our host community continues to grow. We believe there are several factors that are driving this growth. The first reason is that demand drives supply. For instance, in Q3, as guests were returning to cities, we saw urban supply accelerate. Second, since Airbnb began in 2008, Hosts have consistently churned Airbnb to earn extra income. In fact, since 2008, hosts on Airbnb have earned $180 billion in our platform. Third, over the last year, we made several product improvements to help onboard and support our hosts. But we're not stopping there. On November 16th, we're going to introduce an all-new, super easy way for millions of people to turn uh, to Airbnb their homes as part of our winter release. We're also delivering a major upgrade to air cover that provides even more top to bottom protection for every host. Now, with these upgrades and more, we aim to unlock the next generation of hosts and improve the experience for more than 4 million people that are already hosting. 
So just to recap, we had a record Q3, nights and experiences booked were our highest Q3 ever, revenue and adjusted EBITDA were record highs, free cash flow was $960 million, and in the last 12 months, we've generated $3.3 billion in free cash flow. And we'll take our first question from Lloyd Walmsley at UBS. Just the, the, the classic kind of macro question, anything you guys are seeing uh, globally, any pockets uh, where you're seeing you know, weaker trends in bookings or, or ADRs that would uh, be a kind of early warning sign that you'd flag uh, heading into next year? So, you know, one of the things that we've seen is despite a lot of consumers pulling back on spending, the one area that I haven't seen them pull back on as much is travel. And in particular, like travel where you can go and see your friends, see your family, more inspirational type of travel. In other words, meaningful travel, not just mass travel. And I think the reason why is just because, because many people are now working from home. Um, you know, the mall is now Amazon. The movie theater is now Netflix. People still want to get out of the house. They still want to have memories. They still want to have meaningful experiences. And I think that's why they continue to turn to Airbnb. And so just like people continue to travel this quarter, we expect really strong demand for Airbnb next year. And again, the new use cases are sticking. In other words, a fifth of our nights booked are for longer than a month, and half of our nights booked are longer than a week. And this has basically been a boon because of the flexibility that people have in being able to essentially work from home or have a hybrid work lifestyle. At the same time, our urban and cross-border businesses are incredibly strong because of the value that we provide. And we think that value and having great deals is going to be a key driver as the economy slows down. On the supply side, I just would remind everyone that we started Airbnb in 2008 during the Great Recession. And at that time, many people were turning to Airbnb to earn extra income. And so we think this will be also a great time for millions of people to consider hosting, which is why we're focused on this on November 16th. So we're feeling really positive about the, the path forward. With regards to experiences, to answer your question very simply, um, you know, the great thing about experiences, is we don't have to have an inc very much incremental investment to make this work. It's really just a matter of incorporating experiences more into our existing marketing, incorporating experiences more into our existing products, We'll move next to Navid Khan at True Securities. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, is there anything worth calling out in terms of uh, incremental demand for European sales from travelers outside of, the, of uh, Europe, uh, given the decline in the currencies uh, in, that, in that area? Sure. In terms of European demand, you know, we are seeing strong uh, European demand from places like the U.S. where the dollar is stronger than the euro. It's not a material part of the business, so you're, it's hard to see it um, impact the overall materiality given just the size of our business being in 220 countries and regions around the world. Um, you know, but, and conversely, you know, European travelers are going to be maybe less likely to come, say, to the U.S. where the U.S. dollar is so strong. So there's some offset in there. Um, overall, the impact of foreign exchange it isn't as large on the business because of the regional impacts. More people kind of travel either domestically or within their own regions. We'll take our next question from Brian Fitzgerald at Wells Fargo. Thanks, guys. Um, I think you'll have more to say about supply with the upcoming winter release, but uh, just wonder if you could talk about um, what, what you see as continuing pain, pain points for hosts. Brian, maybe you just talked to that a little bit. Um, and maybe also structural drivers around supply like uh, local regulations and, and zoning. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So let me uh, let, yeah, let me let me dive into this because this is a this is a pretty important topic. Um, you know, just just to zoom out. Um, you know, we have a global network where demand drives supply, and that means that where we see our highest growth of booking is also typically where we see our highest growth of supply. And just to give you an example, this past quarter, approximately 35% of our new available hosts had started as guests. So this is a really strong network where guests become hosts, and hosts, as they get more bookings, they tend to tell their friends about it, and then we get more supply that way. And so this is, I think, one of the things that's really, really important. But beyond that, obviously, we want to be very aggressive about recruiting more hosts to Airbnb because this is a great time. 
And because of the softening economy, we think increasingly, now more than ever before, people are interested in putting their homes on Airbnb to make supplemental income. So to answer your question, what are the pain points? I would highlight two. As we've talked to people that are considering hosting, they've told us two things. The first thing they said is that they want it to be easier to get started. They need help getting started, becoming a host. The second thing is they're a little nervous about having strangers in their house. And so we have tackled both of these. On November 16th, as part of our winter release, number one, we're going to unveil an all-new, super easy way for millions of people to put their home on Airbnb. I'm pretty excited about this. We've been working on this for quite a while. Second, to make people feel comfortable about having other people in their homes, which will unlock a lot more everyday people putting their real homes on Airbnb, we are going to be providing some huge upgrades and improvements to air cover for hosts. If we do these two things, I think we're going to help unlock significantly greater amounts of supply, which is already on top of the momentum that we have and we've seen in Q3. Maybe the final thing I'll just say is in addition to adding more supply in Airbnb, the holy grail is pointing demand to where we have supply. Because on no night globally on Airbnb are we ever close to 100% occupy. It's just a matter of pointing demand to where we have supply. And this is the whole theory around Airbnb categories, that instead of hoping people type in the place you have available supply in a search box, you can then come and have more of a browse experience where we highlight homes that are available. So this is our holistic strategy. Um, as far as pain points, as far as like from a regulatory standpoint, I mean, one of the things we've seen is a redistribution away from very large cities, kind of to everywhere. And a lot of cities and a lot of local communities have been actually reaching out to us because they can see the economic opportunity we provide. So we're working really, really closely with these markets. But um, we're feeling very optimistic about our supply for 2023. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks, well, no, go I'm ahead, just double click on two on a couple of Brian's points because I think they're really important. You know, because of these partnerships that we've had with local governments and especially on tax collection, you know, we've delivered more than six billion dollars in tourism related taxes to local governments. I mean, this is a material amount of money. And collecting rem remitting taxes, we do it in over thirty thousand jurisdictions around the globe. And I think, you know, in terms of like zoning regulations, we believe that the you know reasonable regulation actually normalizes hosting. And when you normalize hosting, it can really be a foundation for future growth. So we actually think that you do this in a reasonable way, and it will actually be a tailwind to growth in the future. We'll go next to Bernie McTurnan at Needham & Company. Great. <clears throat> Thank you for taking the question. <clears throat> um, realize that you guys are saying you're not seeing any negative impact yet from the macro on the consumer, but as you think about different scenarios playing out and the potential impact of a recessionary environment, is there any cohort or demographic data um, that you see from your consumers that makes you think Airbnb could be more resilient than broader travel? I mean, I can, I can answer this at a high level, and Dave, you can go in. I mean, Bernie, it's a great question. One of the things we noticed during the pandemic, one of the lessons of the pandemic, is I think Airbnb is the most adaptable business model in all of travel. And the reason why is we're not just a European business. We're not just a North American business. We are a truly global business. We're in 100,000 cities all over the world. We're not just a vacation rental business. We're also an urban business, also a cross-border business. We're not just a family business. We're also popular with millennials, Gen Z, and retirees, and nearly every type of price point. So I think that however travel demand changes, we'll be able to adapt. And that's one of the great things about our model. You know, it's a global network. Guests become hosts. Most hosts are regular people that tell their friends about Airbnb, which is why when a market occupancy increases, it tends to in itself create more supply. So these are some of the reasons why um, we feel very, very excited about our ability to continue to adapt given this challenging macroeconomic environment. Dave, I don't know if you want to add anything to it. Yeah, I'll just, if I double click, I mean, it's just a great value that we provide, right? That people can pick anything from, you know, we're from budget to lux. And if a person has a certain kind of budget constraint, they can choose to maybe get a small, slightly smaller place or a place with fewer amenities. You know, maybe they're um, a little further out. Like they can adjust the type of home they want based on their budget. And I think Airbnb has such a diversity of offerings that that enables them to do it uniquely with us. Which, which is very different than the flexibility they might have at hotels. We'll go next to Stephen Jew at Credit Suisse. 
you guys took off the China supply, but uh, maintained your outbound business. It's you know probably a little bit too early to tell, and there probably isn't a lot of outbound happening as of yet. But you know, is there anything we should worry about from a customer acquisition funnel or retention standpoint? Because the the Airbnb use case for I guess the Chinese traveler is going to get reduced to I guess you know international only versus what was previously domestic plus international. Thanks. Yes, yeah, Stephen. I mean, the, the 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 crown jewel of our China business was always, and we thought always was going to be the China outbound business. And the reason why is the take rate was higher for the outbound business than it was for the domestic business. The inventory is more unique. There's less competition, and the average daily rate is a lot higher. So the outbound business was always the price the price part of our business, and that's what we're focused on. Now, as you know, not a lot of people are leaving the country right now. But we want to be prepared for when they do. And they eventually will, of course. And so the two things we're doing to prepare is, number one, we're going to be continuing to invest in our brand in China. And number two, if people are traveling and they're leaving China, they're going to other countries. And we would call these the corridor countries. And the, the primary place they're first probably going to go is intra-region. So they're presumably going to be going to Southeast Asia, Korea, Japan. Eventually, they'll go a little further to Europe, and then they'll presumably come back to the United States, especially maybe um, the kind of some of the coastal cities. And this is kind of how I think travel may recover. And so what we need to do is make sure we have enough supply in these corridors and continue to invest in our brand in China. And I think by only having an outbound business, um, we can actually focus all of our investment just on that, and it actually makes it a lot more cost-effective, a lot more efficient. And one thing I've learned is the more focused we are, the more likely we are to achieve our results. So that's what we're feeling. We're actually feeling really confident about the prospects for China. It's just going to be a longer, um, like, payoff than, you know, because of the fact that not a lot of people are leaving the country and traveling right now.